You're in the pocket of the fishing industry. You lack empathy. You're in the pocket of you the lack fishing industry. industry. You have no empathy. You are corrupted. You don't care about the fish. You're in the pocket you of the fishing industry. You're in the pocket 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 of the fishing Before I start this reaction and review video, I would like to make certain things very clear because people seem very confused. I am thrilled about the fact that people suddenly seem to care about some of the issues that exist in the fisheries industry and that we have been talking about for decades. In fact, I had come to the conclusion that no one really gave a shit, but clearly I was wrong. And for that, I am thankful that the documentary did draw attention onto some of the issues that do exist in the fisheries industry. I've got many problems with the movie, but one that has emerged over the last few days is that it has clearly created an environment of mistrust and poorly justified skepticism against scientists. Scientists who, by the way, have so skillfully been ignored in the movie as they probably would have provided a picture that would not have supported the narrative of the author. This sadly perpetrates a war on science that has been way too tangible lately. I never thought that as a person who's been fighting against these issues for years, who grew up on a sailboat for a decade and who feels deeply connected to the ocean, I would suddenly be called a wicked, heartless, corrupted liar and jerk. To me, this is gut-wrenching and deeply troubling. And the fact that we cannot touch this movie, that it is virtually seen as sacred by some, proves that it did not start a conversation, it shut it. Now, of course, not everyone is shutting out scientists, and I am very grateful for those of you who are seeking nuance, who want more information, and who don't automatically label marine biologists and fishery scientists as tainted, manipulated hypocrites. So thank you so much for your support. Thank you for understanding that this is a complex and multifaceted field, where not everything is bad, where not all of these issues apply to the entire industry. And finally, thank you for not losing hope, because really there is hope, and I find that the documentary completely destroys it. If you haven't watched part one, I suggest that you watch it first, because this video really just addresses the end of the documentary and my general opinion. At this point, I'm watching the part where he talks about Sea Shepherd that is stopping some illegal fishing vessels on the west coast of Africa. The ship was a Chinese trawler. In its hold were huge quantities of illegally caught fish. The vessel was detained and fined. It was only one victory, but it sent a clear message to the other ships in the area that there were. Okay, it was only one victory, but it sent a clear message to the other ships in the area. The director here, Ali Tabrizi, is really clearly praising the work of Sea Shepherd. It's great that they're going after these vessels. It's great that people talk about them. It's great that people get a better understanding that this is a, an issue worldwide through the actions of Sea Shepherds. But this is not going to change illegal fishing. This is never going to stop illegal fishing. Ultimately, what they're doing is that they're treating the symptom. Illegal fishing is the end product of a very complex chain of events. Other NGOs, like Oceana, that <laughs> the author of this documentary is literally dragging in the mud, are actually trying to tackle issues of illegal fishing at the root. That is how you change things, not by sinking ships. Would you be able to take us to these slave ships, or is it too dangerous to film? Um, okay, I think this is one of the most important part of the documentary. Slave labor is not necessarily something you will find everywhere, and there are some places where it is 
much bigger than elsewhere. Um, it is very important to be able to give a voice to these people and to have them to have them talk about their experiences on these boats. I just want to jump in here and add a few things. As I said, it's important to give a voice to these people, but that's clearly not what the movie is doing. Here it's obvious to me that Ali is giving a voice to his own agenda and his own argument. And this agenda is not going to help people suffering from abuse in the industry. Not only that, but he just keeps bringing this back on how dangerous it was for him to film this. He does not mention for a second how dangerous this might have been for the person that he was interviewing. The EGF has been covering illegal fishing and slavery at sea for decades, and I have never heard them brag once about how dangerous it was for them. Because that's not what it's about. It's not about you. And finally, think about it. Do you really think that stopping eating fish is going to stop the abuse that exists in part of the industry? There are NGOs that have been talking about the issue of slavery in fishing vessels, they've and also illegal fishing. Um, I suggest you check out the Environmental Justice Foundation. They've been talking about that for years. I want to recommend this book if you're interested in anything that has to do with illegal fishing and slavery. This book, The Outlaw Ocean by Ian Urbina. Urbina. Uh, I can follow the thoughts that people are saying. If you want to eat, don't kill anything. Like just eating vegetables and fruits and stuff like that. I can go along with that, but I really can't go along with people that are saying uh, you must not kill Grint. And then they are killing or eating other animals. For me, a fish, a chicken, a whale, exactly the same value. It has one life. Although I didn't agree with everything he said, the whale had a point. Uh, he does indeed have a point, and I think that actually uh, this is the first time that the that that the director is offering us a nuanced point of view on an issue, and I find it extremely refreshing. Um, you can think whatever you want of the whaling that happens in the Faroe Islands. He at least gives the voice to one of the people who does this and he is letting them speak and he's listening to them and he's not pushing them into a corner like he did with the other NGOs. And this is really important because instead of offering this one-sided view, it, it gives you a better understanding of the complexity of the thing or why people are doing this. I have a friend who lives in the Faroe and who has participated in this whaling and he also had something to say about that. He was telling me, you know, we're a nation that live on an island where there's pretty much nothing. Uh, I don't know if you've ever looked at what the Faroe Island looks like. It's gorgeous, but there's no trees, there's no plant, there's nothing. There's basically just grass and rocks and cliffs, and it's surrounded by the sea. So it's a nation of fishing. It's a nation that eats a lot of fish, and that has been whaling for food for a long time. I agree that tradition doesn't necessarily justify the killing of certain animals, but I think it is also worth considering the fact that in this case, we're talking about people for whom these fish and these whales are the closest thing they have for food. This is, this is in their home, right? That's what they have. That and sheep. They have a lot of sheep everywhere. You can tell them to become vegetarian and to eat some bananas and avocados that go three times around the world before making it to the Faroe Islands, but from an environmental point of view, I'm not 100% sure that's better. <laughs> I 
love Sylvia Earle. <laughs> um, okay. Gosh, that was intense. I talked a lot. So what is my final take on the movie? I will begin with the good stuff so that people don't start sending me death threats. The movie exposes some problems that are by no mean universal throughout the fisheries industry, but that are very real and definitely need to be addressed. I hope people understand, however, that the final message, stop eating fish, is a very skewed advice and will not stop fisheries from existing, nor will it stop illegal fishing or slavery in some part of the world. So it is vital that we continue to support the researchers and NGOs that try to tackle these issues. Framing them as the enemy is ludicrous. I, for one, don't eat fish, and I haven't eaten fish for about 10 years. And I think it's important to point out that there are different schools of thoughts within the marine and fisheries science community. There are those who are quite optimistic, and there are those who are more pessimistic about the future of the fisheries and fish stocks. And I tend to lean more towards the pessimistic side, and I do think that we cannot aspire to sustainable fishing if we continue eating fish at this rate. So where it makes sense to do so, I encourage people who can, that is people from privileged countries, to decrease their fish consumption, or to shift towards more sustainable fish, which again do exist. Now that I got that out of the way, I'm going to be pretty harsh with the documentary. It's disingenuous, it paints a very bleak and deceitful picture of the industry, it pretty much disregards the existence of small fishing businesses and artisanal fisheries, it dishonestly proclaims that governments and NGOs are corrupted, yet without NGOs and good governing, the fisheries would be in a much more dire state today. It does nothing to teach more about the issues at stake, how they come about, who works on solving them. It completely ignores the fact that NGOs and researchers have been talking about some of these issues for decades. It is biased, prejudiced, and discriminatory. It is unfair and unjust and finally unrealistic in its solutions. In short, it's pretty typical of a conspiracy movie where it mixes reality with lies, which to be honest, I find really disrespectful as it uses some of the existing complex issues in the industry that are real as a springboard to support its own agenda and arguments. This lack of sincerity is just unethical. In terms of solutions and what you can do, if you live in a country where access to a veggie-based diet is easy and you can afford it, then by all means feel free to reduce your fish consumption. If you want to eat fish occasionally or you don't want to reduce your consumption, then aim for fish that are not at the top of the food chain, so smaller fish tend to be a little bit better, like sardines or mackerel. And consider sustainable options by either looking at labels or talking to your fishmonger. I think something that we should all do is to inform ourselves, and this is true for any food we consume. Know where your food comes from. Know what kind of environmental impact it has. Know what it involves. Not all vegetables are good either. And unfortunately, some of the best things like sugar, chocolate, and coffee are really bad for the environment. They require an incredible amount of water and are responsible for a lot of habitat and biodiversity loss. And finally, I'd like to say that consumers are not the only solution. Not everything relies on consumers. As I said before, a lot of these issues require to be addressed at the root. And this is effectively achieved by researchers and NGOs that work with stakeholders, lobby governments, find compromise. So please do not lose hope in these people. Do not stop supporting them. Do not wedge a war against your allies. I know this is an emotionally charged topic, and I myself have really struggled not to let my emotions get in the way of my critical thinking. But as Jonathan Haidt said, when a group circles around sacred objects, in this case, the movie, they give up the possibility of thinking clearly. And this is a dangerous place to be. We want to be able to think clearly. 
we want to be able to see both the value and the problems with this industry. Not everything is black and white, and fisheries could actually help support the diet of a lot of people around the world, sustainably. So let's try and put our emotions on the side a little bit and listen to what some of the scientists have to say. The fact that they are called fisheries scientists does not make them bad people. It just makes them knowledgeable people about this topic. I would like to thank you for watching this video. It's been very tough making these videos. People have been losing their shit over this. But trust me, this is not how you solve problems. Thank you. Thank you.